for patients with mycosis fungoides, are there negative impacts on fingernails? I'm having trouble with brittle and misshaped fingernails. I'm not sure who can, who can handle that question. I can talk about that. Nails are well within dermatology. So it's a tough question because there are actually a lot of different reasons why someone's nails might be affected. And I guess the first question is, you know, what does the skin around the nails look like? Could it possibly be that the nails are affected because there is lamellar surrounding the nails? So I think that's the first question that I would address. The second is, you know, try to think about what treatments you're doing. And if those treatments involve using a number of topicals that then you're washing your hands frequently with, just the wear and tear of washing your hands frequently can affect the nails, um, can cause brittleness. Um, with respect to specific treatments used for CTCL, um, a number of them can have very mild effects on the skin. Um, topical steroids might increase the risk of fungal infections. And so could it be disease unrelated to the topicals, but really a secondary, you know, nail fungus? Or could it be a little bit of irritant and drying and, and um, uh, stimulation from the gels that you're using for treating the disease that is just causing, again, wear and tear on the nails? So a lot of different reasons for that to be the case, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's some degree of nail brittleness that you're seeing. In patients with mycosis fungoides, is there a chance it will go away later in life? If so, how much? Yeah, I think I think I can talk about the early stage patients. Um, in terms of early stage patients, we have had um, a few patients where after treatment, in particular um, forms of phototherapy like PUVA, um, immunotherapy like imiquimod, achieved you know, sustained remissions, although we're really hesitant to use the word cure because it's certainly possible that after a certain amount of years, it, it may pop up again. And while that seems scary, the idea that it may come back, even though it's gone away for so many years, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that that patient is gonna go on to have a worse outcome um, over time. But have I seen patients where, um, it's been at least five years and really nothing has come back. Um, in my short time caring for patients, will that be the same in the next 10, 20 years? I, I'm not so sure. Um, but I have seen uh, pretty sustained remissions in some early stage patients. Dr. Pro, would you like to address the question for advancing? Yeah, yeah. Yes, I, I do. Uh, I think that uh, whatever Dr. LaRocca just said applies also to advanced stage. I think, you know, um, some patients have remarkable responses uh, to systemic uh, therapy. And so uh, it's not uncommon that after they complete systemic aggressive therapy, they could actually go back uh, to using some of the topical treatments. Um, so. And I think also it's important to remember that every day we are really discovering something new in these diseases. And I think our goal, you know, and that's why, as you said, Autumn, clinical trials are so important. Our goal is really to find more effective treatments so that this, uh, you know, is uh, not a chronic disease anymore, but it's a disease where we have long period of remission and that uh, we can have even, you know, a cure. Uh, so this is uh, what uh, we are working on. You know, there are many, many ongoing clinical trials that are looking at completely novel ways uh, to treat uh, this disease. And if, uh, again, with these promising results, we do hope that in the future, in the near future, uh, you know, patients can achieve uh, more durable remissions. I've been recently diagnosed with stage 1A mycosis fungoides, and I'm wondering how common it is to have patches appear or get markedly larger seemingly overnight. I'm treating with cortisone creams currently, and it seems to help, but one patch clears and another takes its place within a matter of days. Is this normal? I guess I can start out with this one. Um, I I think one of the hard things is everyone seems to follow their own path in cutaneous lymphoma, and there's not one 
course of disease that's common to everyone. So people with stage 1A disease tend to have a limited number of skin lesions. And people can develop new lesions at any time throughout the course of this disease. That's one of the hardest things that, you know, it's a chronic condition that we're constantly managing, not something that we can cure. And so it is common to get new lesions. Um, sometimes if people are doing ultraviolet light phototherapy, all of a sudden they'll see new lesions pop up, especially at the beginning that they hadn't seen before, before they go away with the treatment. I would say getting new lesions in a matter of days is a bit unusual. And if you notice that you're getting many more lesions and they're becoming much more extensive on your body, then it's a good time to follow up with your dermatologist.